Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Principles of Biotechnology Rules of Recombinant DNA Technology Processes of Recombinant DNA Technology So, a new lesson on biotechnology. Now, we have studied so many different lessons on biology for the past so many days, right? We spoke about the different life processes. We spoke about the different living organisms which exist on earth. We spoke about plants, animals. We even talked about genetics where we saw that how genes, how important genes are, how uh, characters or traits get inherited from one generation to the next. So we have learned quite a few things in biology. Now we are going to talk about something which is a combination of biology and technology. Now what are we going to study in biotechnology? That might be a very uh, obvious question in each of your mind. So whenever we have the word bio, it means life. So it is going to deal with living organisms again because you have bio. And when we say technology, that means it is going to talk about the advanced technology which is being used in relation to living organisms. That is how living organisms are going to be utilized for something which is going to be, you can say, better for human beings because this entire technology has been brought into picture by human beings. Now, why will humans bring this into scene when it is going to benefit them? Because as you know, humans are all selfish people they do a lot of things for themselves so in order that things benefit them so for that purpose they have merged biology that is living organisms with technology now here we will see that what can happen when you try to mix and match the traits of different living organisms and in order to do that you need technology when i say technology uh, i mean in terms of uh, the equipments that is required in terms of the laboratories that are required because there are so many things which need very specific environment to take place so all those uh, facilities need to be provided by from the technology part so so here we are going to talk about biotechnology now this entire field is a very vast field as well as a very you know, upcoming field where a lot of research is still going on but here in this lesson we are just going to introduce biotechnology where we will see that how was this entire uh, stream of biotechnology came into existence and what are the basic principles of biotechnology so we will just touch upon the basics of biotechnology so with this brief introduction let us try to define biotechnology how do we define it so it is nothing but use of biological organisms and processes to manufacture products which are useful to humans as i said human beings will always do things thinking of their own benefit so they manufacture products with the help of living organisms now this is not a simple task so if for example you know before that what do we mean when i say manufacture products what kind of products do we manufacture from living organisms now can you think of an example because in the past few lessons we have spoken about a lot of products which come which utilize living organisms exactly in the previous lesson itself well while we were discussing about the good bacteria the useful microbes what did we see we saw that those microorganisms actually help in preparation of so many useful products like curd like antibiotics like enzymes like uh, so many alcoholic drinks so, so there are so many products which gets manufactured with the help of living organisms so in biotechnology also we will look at the same aspect so now you might ask so whatever we studied there like preparation of curd or preparation of antibiotics so that means they all fall under the category of biotechnology yes exactly so they all fall under the category of biotechnology because we also saw 
that uh, if you take example of curd preparation so that is relatively a very simple process where you do not need a lot of technology where you do not need a lot of equipment or something but when you talk about something else for example when you talk about preparation of alcohol or when you talk about the preparation of antibiotics it is not that you can just prepare them at your home so you need a lot of stuffs for them you also need a lot of equipments for them so in the previous lesson also we we spoke about so many different things for which you actually need to set up the entire uh, apparatus for the production of that particular product so all those things require technology so you are actually combining biological organisms that is living organisms with technology and the result is that you are able to manufacture products which are useful to human beings so that is biotechnology so that is why it is called biotechnology because technology plus life is giving you something useful so now the question is what forms the basis of biotechnology i mean i mean wh why do we even think of utilizing living organisms to produce different products so what is the basis from where does this entire idea come up so what is that point of origin now before we discuss that let me tell you that this entire field of biotechnology can be classified or categorized into two sections so one is the classical biotechnology where we talk about those kind of examples where curd is being prepared from the microbes or those the basic things where you do not need lot of technology so they all are they also fall under the category of biotechnology but they fall under classical biotechnology that is those things which used to happen traditionally and they do not need a lot of advanced technology whereas the other category is the modern biotechnology so here the, a, a good part of classical biotechnology have already been discussed in the previous lesson while we were discussing about the good microbes because that is what the good microbes are nothing but living organisms and they helped us in producing so many different products so we have discussed quite a few instances of classical biotechnology in the previous lesson but in this lesson we are going to focus on modern biotechnology so in modern biotechnology we will see that how advanced technology helps in mix and match between living organisms now you might be wondering that i have been using this term mix and match quite often since i have started talking about biotechnology why is that that's because when we talk about modern biotechnology we talk about something very interesting we talk about mix and match of genes between organisms now by now all of you know what are genes we have spoken in detail about genetics so we all know that every organism is made up of genes now if i say that i want to exchange the genes or if i say i want to transfer a gene from a horse into uh, say a lion so how does that sound to you that sounds crazy at this moment right but yes when i say mix and match between genes i'm talking about something crazy like that so in biotechnology or in modern biotechnology they talk about things like that where you actually take out genes from gene from one organism and put that into some other organism and you know what does the gene do so whatever traits which we see in each organism that is because of the genes which are present inside that organism so we can actually think of mixing and matching the genes between living organisms so that sounds really weird and really crazy but yes that is the truth that that's what we do in modern biotechnology now the question is what is the basis of this mix and match how can we even think of mixing and matching genes between organisms a lion looks so different from a mouse a mouse looks so different from a bird a bird looks so different from a human being so different living organisms are so different from each other so how can we even think of exchanging genes between them now that's because all living organisms contain a genetic material and most of the organisms have dna as the genetic material now there are only a few exception like the viruses which have rna as their genetic material otherwise most of the living organisms have dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid as their genetic material so this is something which is common between all the organisms whether you talk about plants you talk about animals you talk in animals whether you talk about a microorganism 
Or you talk about an insect, you talk about a bird, you talk about a lion, human being, elephant, you talk about any living organism. It has a genetic material and most of them have DNA. So DNA is present in all of them. And where are the genes located? Genes are located on the DNA. Right? So you think of any organism, think of yourself. So our body is made up of a huge number of cells like this. When you look at what each of the cell in more detail, so each of the cell contains what? It contains a nucleus. So this is the nucleus. So when you magnify the nucleus, so this is how the nucleus look like. So the nucleus has the nucleolus. So here you have the central dense region is the nucleolus. And what are these red thin thread like structures? So they are the chromatin threads and these chromatin threads later, later they condense to form the chromosomes. So this structure, the egg shaped structure which you see here, this is nothing but the chromosome. And each of these chromosomes on the chromosomes are located the genes. So the yellow colored structure which you see, they are genes. Now what is present inside the chromosome? Inside the chromosome chromosome you have the genetic material and the genetic material is DNA which is deoxyribonucleic acid and it, is a, it has a double stranded structure and on this DNA you have the genes for example let us suppose this much portion of the DNA represent a particular gene say the gene for hair color again this portion of the DNA is represents the gene for eye color so this gene for hair color will actually uh, help in the synthesis of proteins which will give that specific color to your hair. Similarly, this portion of the DNA will actually help in synthesizing proteins which will give that specific color to your eye. So that is how the body is organized or the genes are organized. And we know all these things from whatever we have studied before. So what do we get to know from this? We get to know that it doesn't matter how different living organisms look or how different they are or how similar they are. So one basic thing which is common in all of them is that they all have a genetic material and most of them have DNA as the genetic material and genes are located on the DNA. So now if we think of mixing and matching genes, if we think of taking out gene from one, putting it into another one, so what do we need to do? we need to play around with the DNA and DNA is something which is common in all of them so all of them have DNA and the structure of DNA is going to be the same in all of them so all of them will have the same double stranded DNA in all of them uh, the DNA what is DNA actually DNA is nothing but it is made up of the nucleotides that is there are bases the sequence of bases which are present in DNA so by now you all know that DNA has the four ba nitrogenous bases that is a, G, T and C, adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine and all these bases are uh, joined together by hydrogen bonds that is A always pairs up with T with a triple bond and G always pairs up with C with a double bond. So that is how the entire structure of DNA is organized and this structural organization of DNA is common in all living organisms. So that is one thing which is common in every living organism and based on this common feature that the this thought of biotechnology came into picture. So since you have something which is common in all of them, so you can actually think of uh, this process of mix and match. So now here on this slide, you can actually see a variety of living organisms. So on this screen, you can actually see a variety of different living organisms. So you can see a tiny bacteria at the center of the screen. So here you see this tiny bacteria. Here you see a huge elephant, a small mouse. Again, if you see here, you have the jellyfishes which are seen in the oceans. The plants, the giraffe, human beings, fishes, all of them look so different from each other. I mean, you just cannot relate them. I mean, if you look at their external features, the way they behave, if you compare a fish with a plant, you hardly could see anything in common. 
but deep down the basic if you look at the basic structure of each of them all of them have got a genetic material and in most of them the genetic material is nothing but dna and the structure of dna dna is nothing but a double stranded structure which is made up of nucleotides that is it is nothing but the sequence of bases now the question is if DNA is what that consists of the gene and we say that gene is what that actually synthesize the proteins and proteins is what makes us so the proteins create us so now if all of us are made up of DNA then why do we look so different why do different living organisms look so different now when we talk about DNA it becomes very important to talk about the sequencing on DNA now as I said DNA is nothing but a double stranded structure somewhat like this but this double stranded structure contains the nitrogenous bases which are paired with another nitrogenous base now what are the bases which we have adenine guanine cytosine and thiamine now the pairing the base pairing is done in such a way that adenine always pairs up with thiamine by a triple bond whereas guanine always pair up with cytosine with a double bond so these hydrogen bonds actually hold the two strands together because every time you have a pairing between a purine and a pyrimidine now i am not going to discuss about the types of nitrogenous bases and all these things because we have already discussed them while we were talking about the detailed structure of dna so now this sequence of bases are different in different organisms and due to this difference in sequences different organisms look different because as soon as the sequence changes what happens the proteins which will get synthesized that also changes now when the proteins which are being synthesized changes so what happens the look and feel and the structure behavior everything of that organism also changes so that is how different organisms are different okay so now the question is again of the same thing why do we talk about mix and match of genes and what do we mean by that now let us suppose there are certain features which are present in a giraffe but which is not present in for example say a mouse let us say giraffe they have got a long neck but in case of human beings or mouse they do not have a long neck so what creates that long neck that is because of some of the proteins which get synthesized for that long neck so who gives the signal or who gives the um, um, indication for the synthesis of the proteins genes so now if i say that i want to extract the genes which are responsible for long neck in giraffe and i want to put those genes inside a mouse and then i expect that the mouse will also have a long neck so is that possible it is a very common thing that yes if a gene which is responsible for creating proteins for long neck is present inside a mouse then obviously the mouse is going to have a long neck because after all the entire structure or the entire uh, structure and behavior of a mouse is all because of the proteins and the proteins are all because of the genes so the type of genes which are present inside a mouse decides how the mouse would be so if we have a gene which is responsible for long neck and that is present inside a mouse then yes of course the mouse will have a long neck now the challenging question is is it possible or how is it possible to extract a gene from one animal and put it inside another animal so that is the challenging part which needs a lot of engineering which needs a lot of uh, advanced technology and that is where biotechnology comes into picture so that is what we are going to talk about in this lesson so, so now you see something which was sounding weird and um, crazy some time back will turn out to be something which is extremely interesting and challenging and it is of course possible thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.